Rev up your engine! People are always looking for cheaper used SUV. Here's an 04 Explorer. It was 1500 bucks. Is it worth it? Is it a pile of junk? Or is it in between? We're gonna find out. Okay, we'll start by looking at it. It's reasonably good here. Of course, the paint's faded away. Well, what do you want for 1500 bucks? It's got the four door. Tires are still good. It's got a tow hitch. But when we come to this side, it's got a pretty serious bash here. Not in the greatest of shape. <laughs> really got whacked here. Well, it looks bad, but the frame or anything wasn't bent because it goes straight down the highway and doesn't wobble all over the place. So that's a good thing. That's one of the reasons that it only went for $1,500. Now sometimes these can be decent vehicles. You can check under the hood. If the hood supports hold up, it might whack me in the head. I think I'll get a stick. Just like the Boy Scouts, my motto, be prepared. Yeah, as we look inside, it's got the Ford Venerable six-cylinder engine. Got a timing chain in it. It's a pretty reliable engine. And as we go inside, the interior is a little worn, but I mean, what do you want for $1,500? The seat's still comfortable. Now it does have 250,000 miles on it. Let's see how it starts up. Starts up okay, let's check the AC. Hey, it's still blowing cold. But it does have various lights on. The ABS, seat belt system, and the service engine light on. So let's get out the old scan tool. Let's see what it says. Well, it may be old, but it still reads the VIN number. And while we're waiting, you'll notice the AC doesn't work on one, two, three, but it does work on four. That generally means it needs a new blower resistor. They're not that expensive. But now we'll look at the data. Here we go. It knows what engine it is, the way it loads, and then we will check the codes. And here we go. It's scanning the codes. All right. It's got two trouble codes for the PCM and one for the ABS. Yeah, we'll check the ABS because we really don't care that much about it on an old car like this. Read codes. Pretty cut and dry. Missing right rear wheel speed sensor input and left rear. So who cares? It probably doesn't work anyways, even if you did put sensors on it. What we really want to check is the power turn control module problems. Let's see what those codes are. Read codes. And what do we have? EGR insufficient flow and a cruise control function. Eh, that's anti-pollution stuff. Not all that big of a deal, really. So I'm gonna analyze the live data. That's really important on this old thing. Live data, here we go. On this old thing, it's really important. We're looking for orange colors that are really bad data, and any data that looks a little strange. We'll start looking through this. So far, everything seems pretty good. Even on this old thing, it may be 17 years old, you still get a lot of data. Good thing it shows no misfire currently detected. Uh, the data so far is pretty good for an old thing with 250,000 miles on it. Bunch of no faults, that's good. Now the injectors have faults. And as you can see here, the long-term fuel trim on bank one, it's a V6 engine, so there's bank one and bank two. It's adding a little bit of fuel, 1.56, sometimes a little bit less. But when we look at long-term fuel trim on bank two, the other bank, it's higher. As you can see, it's going 4.29, sometimes a little bit higher than that. So you can see this one is adding a little bit more fuel. Now, if this was a Toyota or a Honda, it'd mean something, that there's something relatively big going wrong. But this is a Ford with 250,000 miles on it. I see this all the time. It's not gonna idle perfectly, but it's good enough for this old thing. So let's keep looking on other data. Yeah, it's not gonna idle perfectly, but what the heck. Now, just out of curiosity, let's check the max airflow sensor. You want it in drive, idling with the air conditioning turned off. Now in this case, it's a little bit high. This is a four liter engine. It should be closer to four grams per second. The mass airflow sensor on this thing probably needs replacing. But they don't cost all that much. AutoZone, you get one for less than a hundred bucks. They're not that expensive. So let's read on, see if anything else is weird. Sure, we haven't seen any orange stuff. Now you can see this is incorrect. Both oxygen sensors are staying lean. They're not going rich lean, rich lean. So this thing is running too lean. That could be fixed by a new mass airflow sensor and maybe power cleaning the fuel injectors. Not a deal beater, but it should be going rich lean, rich lean, and it's staying lean, which means it is running lean. But as we go on, there's no orange stuff. There's nothing that's totally bad. Transmission doesn't have any codes. So let's take it for a road test. But before we do, 
You can hear a little clicking. That's fuel injectors clicking. No big deal. The engine actually sounds quite solid. They'll often click with age as long as they run. There were no trouble codes for any of the six injectors, so they're working okay. Now we're gonna go down the road. Actually, it idles smooth as silk. And it takes off, not all that badly, really. Shifts smoothly. We'll take it on the highway. Now we'll get on the highway here. Decent acceleration. And look, even though it's got that big bash in the side, it tracks hands-free, no problems at all. Well, I should put my hands back on so I don't run into one of these trucks. It shakes when you hit bumps, because it's old and the shocks are worn. But actually, it looks like it'd be a very reliable vehicle for driving around. It's really a shame that it's all bashed in, because otherwise it's in excellent shape. Of course, fixing this is three times what the vehicle's worth. And really, if you just show this side of the vehicle, what a deal for $1,500. You can only see one side of the vehicle at a time. And when you consider this is a classic rear wheel drive, you don't have any of that crappy front wheel drive, four wheel drive, all wheel drive system you have to mess with. It's just got a simple front end. And if you don't like the faded headlights, they're just plastic. You can polish them if you want. These actually wouldn't pass inspection. They're too opaque. And if you want to do a little towing, go ahead. Just don't try going in the passenger right rear door. <laughs> it doesn't close all that well. But as I said, that's there. The frame's inside. It didn't touch the frame. It didn't do any serious damage. So now you know the truth about a $1,500 Ford Explorer four-door SUV. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Dextran says, Scotty, what do you think about the Lexus turbocharged four-cylinder engines like an IS200 and IS300? Is it going to charge? Should I look at paying extra for the V6? I figured made by Toyota at last. Yes, but here's my caveat. Any engine, I don't care who makes it, you put a turbocharger on it that strains the engine more, it's going to wear out faster. And... You get a relatively heavy vehicle like a Lexus. They're not lightweight cars. And you run it with only a four-cylinder engine. The turbo gives it enough horsepower. I've driven tons of them around. I got plenty of horsepower. But they do wear out faster. Now, I'm not talking about some piece of junk like a Fiat where the engine blows up when it's got 60,000 miles. They'll still go well over 100, 150,000 miles, probably have no troubles at all. But the V6 engine can go three, four, five hundred thousand 500,000 miles, where a turbo four, they rarely go that far unless you baby them and don't drive that fast. And of course, the problem is with the turbo four in a heavy car, when you floor it, it kicks the turbo in and it rams more air in, which increases the compression inside the engine, and it will wear out faster. They're well made. They can last a long time, but buy the V6, pay extra, and you'll be thanking Scotty 20 years from now when you're still driving it down the road. <laughs> Shane Turner, 1999, says, Scotty, I got a 2013 Ford Taurus, 150,000 miles. I make a sharp left turn, I hear beeping. It says power steering fault, now my car is hard to steer. I check recalls, and my car has no open recalls. Please help. You might look a little bit harder. Take it to a Ford dealer, complain about it. The only problem is, it's now eight years old. They may have passed it by, who knows? But theoretically, any recall is supposed to last forever. Now, of course, realize you have electric power steering. That was one of their early systems, and they've had problems with them breaking down. Yours obviously has broken down. Now, let's say Ford said they won't fix it for free. Well, then you take it to a mechanic like me, we hook up our fancy scan tool, and we analyze it. You got a code for power steering fault. There will be trouble codes for the electric power steering codes. When I work on them, I have to look at the codes, then I have to analyze, do some bidirectional testing, and figure out what's going on. Now, from my experience of those things, it's usually the electric boost motor that breaks, but there's wiring that could go bad, sensors that could go bad. They were recalling them 2011 to 2013, so I would uh, go a little bit further with that. Do a little bit more research. Call up Ford, give them their VIN number, and say, hey, this thing's broken down. I found that there's a problem. What are you going to do about it? and pray they'll do something about them. If they don't, then go to a private mechanic, because at the dealer, they're going to ream you seven ways to Sunday with ridiculous prices, where aftermarket, you could get aftermarket rebuilt ones instead of the outrageously expensive Ford brand new one. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.